Hello, this is Minder Chen. I'm Professor of Management Information System at Martin Business School of Business Economics at CSU Channel Islands. And in this um, lecture, we're going to focus on the implementation of enterprise-wide application package such as ERP or CRM software. And um, usually those software are considered commercial application software and that can be purchased easily. Uh, it can be quite expensive, but uh, it often involves some degree of customization to meet the specific business requirement um, of your own organization in, in your own industry. And particularly in the government, sometimes they refer to this kind of a package solutions, uh, a, a cut solution, which is commercial off the shelf uh, system. And when you are seeking for um, a package implementation uh, to bring to to bring a software system online, uh, you you may go through uh, a so-called RFP process, which you will send out uh, the so-called request for proposal. It's a formal document. You will communicate your business technical and support requirement for particular um, for particular application software package. Uh, sometimes you, you may not actually even specify a specific package solution, uh, but certainly if you're more specific, it's easier for you to compare the various proposal. And, and then the vendor can submit their proposed solution. Um, and the solution may vary actually quite um, um, quite a bit, and, and certainly the price, the pricing can be quite different. By comparison, there's something called RFQ, request for quotation. Um, RFQ tends to be very specific. Uh, that uh, it, it's probably something which may be um, a commodity. Like I want this 19-inch uh, Dell monitor. I want this um, Fujitsu's uh, laptop computer. How much are you going to charge me? Um, and so, so the so the vendor will just submit you a quotation, and basically based on what you tell me you want. This is how much I'm going to sell it to you. In, in the RFP, they need to write a proposal, which can be a very um, lengthy document. And by the way, RFP, some of the large federal government RFP itself, it, it's a very thick documentation that you have to kind of uh, digest before you can write your uh, very thick proposal to respond to it. And once, um, one way or the other, um, when you try to implement your ERP, you need to conduct some kind of so-called gap analysis. Uh, which is really based basically just compare your requirement, business or technical requirement, for uh, what a commercial application package has to offer. You're comparing your requirement with the capabilities or features in a specific package, and to see when the um, first when the package solution is is something which may be workable for you or when there a particular package is good for you. Uh, if you go through the RP route, um, after you receive it, you need to actually go through a process of evaluating um, all the RFPs uh, that have been submitted to you by the vendor to eventually select a, a vendor, in this case, maybe a system integrators. Uh, there's a link um, for a document called Preparing and Evaluating a Request Proposals how to uh, select a vendor. I got this um, nicely made diagram show you in more detail uh, where the gap analysis uh, may occur and, and what's involved in the so-called gap analysis. Um, in conducting gap analysis, you you first have to assess and explore. Uh, let's use ERP as an example. By the way, this certainly uh, is applicable to CRM. 
to explore the software package ERP or CRM packages functionality, uh, features, um, capabilities, um, and uh, and their own underlying reference model. Um, which means the the package itself is based on some underlying reference model and, and, and then offered various features and capability. The reference model can be um, defined as a process model or some kind of data model uh, together. And it could be just a list of features. Um, and on the other hand, you need to analyze your own business need, um, turn that into a requirement document, and, and define your firm's business process procedure or the business rule that you follow. And when you define a business requirement, you need to kind of be aware uh, you, you the difference between us as kind of model and to be model. Us as means your current process and procedures to be just means that where you really want to be. If you want to bring this new system, you want to probably have some new features and, and to, to satisfy some of the new requirement that you may have in mind. Um, and once you have this two um, document, your requirement and the understanding of the capabilities and features of a package, available, then you compare the two to see when there, there's a good match. Uh, we call this gap analysis. Uh, you can probably call it fit analysis when there, there's a fit. When there's a big gap, um, if you evaluate all the package you're looking for and find out they, they all have a big gap, then uh, the decision is pretty much you have to develop custom view solution. Um, and if the gap is smaller, manageable, um, then you may uh, want to go another step and try to select the best fit uh, package okay, among various possible candidates uh, from various vendor. And once you select a particular package, then you can further conduct a detailed gap analysis based on that package. Because we, we do have a kind of high level gap analysis. Here we conduct a more detailed gap analysis. And, and as a result of that, we need to determine way to reduce uh, the gap. So there's even a better fit. Um, to do that, um, the result of this is actually we will have two possible way to reduce the gap. One is to customize the package uh, most of the ERP packages uh, can be further customized, uh, although um, there's a cost involved in, in customizing software packages. And second, the second strategy uh, to reduce um, the gap is to redesign the firm's, um, your company's own business processes. Uh, take this chance of implementing ERP to re-engineer your business process, assuming in this case, the underlying reference model really present the best practice that you inspire to, to adopt, then redesign your firm's business process to um, such that you don't have to actually customize uh, the package that much. Uh, it will save you money in terms of customization. It also move you to a better underlying business processes and rules that you're going to follow. Uh, and certain re-engineering your own process in this way uh, still has a cost involved, um, but it certainly make more sense if um, if the best practice uh, from the package is really better than what you have now. So our assumption here is assume the ERP package has uh, the best practices. In real world, uh, probably what we're looking at in terms of reducing the gap will be a combination of these two. Uh, because some area maybe uh, you really have some unique uh, practice you want to still support. 
then you would customize the package um, for that those features that you want. And in many areas, maybe the package has better way of handling things, then you re-engineer your current business processes. OK. So this is actually a quite a com complex diagram. Uh, in this diagram, we assume you already uh, have picked a particular software package. Um, then you need to really move ahead with your implementation process uh, considering the package has been picked. You need to still define this implementation project scope and organization, install the software, uh, train the project team to start using the software and customizing the software using in terms of testing and customizing the software. And you need to kind of set up your IT infrastructure to run the software properly, fine tune it so that um, you can handle, you can achieve the necessary performance of the of the target system. And the project team will perform the detail gap analysis, the one we just mentioned, and they would quickly bring the system online to to kind of test uh, the the prototypes. Okay. Um, they may need to write special procedures, programs to convert existing legacy systems data into the new environment um, for further testing. They may need to develop additional uh, user interface or interface to the old system uh, for data conversion purpose, uh, um, etc. Perform testing. Um, we'll talk about testing actually when we talk about system development lifecycle a little bit more detail. Eventually go live, uh, still offer support for the system after uh, you go live. And system, uh, even after go live, need to, um, need to be um, improved continuously. And this is where we'll evolve the system um, continuously. And at the same time, I mean, when you get started, you need to start quickly set up your own training program of the target end user and prepare um, various documentations uh, such as a user's menu, etc. Um, and, and for your training. And we, we sometimes ask why ERP project uh, fail. Um, First of all, it's a very complicated, uh, expensive effort. Um, a lot of time people underestimated the complexity of the planning, development, training for ERP implementation. And also a lot of time they failed to involve uh, affected employee in the planning implementation process. And sometimes they try to do too much, uh, too fast. And not a lot of uh, sufficient training um, for the target user. Uh, that could be a major mistake. Also, they um, may not conduct uh, sufficient data conversion um, effort and, and lack of testing. And the other thing is that a lot of time we do have outside consultant or vendor coming to implement ERP for us. Um, that's considered outsourcing. Um, but I always argue that you, you really cannot outsource uh, your problem away. You cannot really outsource your problem away. And um, you, you need to have some local internal expertise uh, in terms of the uh, implementation process or the software and, and certainly your own business pro uh, processes in order to um, to have a successful implementation to avoid um, major failures. Okay. On the flip side, uh, in order to implement ERP package successfully, there are a few success factors that you may want to Pay attention to uh, first understand your own business objective, what you try to achieve through this implementation. Uh, assemble a really strong, dedicated project team with 
a mixed and appropriate skills and recognize and capitalize on the re-engineering opportunity. Okay, remember, we talk about changing your own business processes, and that's where the re-engineering opportunity may come in. You may want to leverage the experience of others and follow a proven formula, uh, hiring outside consultant, uh, consulting fee, uh, firms to help you with it is one, one way to leverage uh, the, those experiences. And you do want to understand the system's capability in gap analysis. We actually should do that. Explore um, various new emerging uh, technology solution and execute your implementation in phases, uh, including implement uh, several modules at a time, not all the module in your ERP package. Uh, so you, you, you would um, kind of learn through that learning curve uh, and, and over time. And, and once you have more experience and the implement additional module will be a little bit easier down the road. Um, you also want to uh, try to customize your ERP packages by prototype using prototyping approach, uh, just to test it out to see whether it will really work. And, and also maintain a close relationship with your vendor or system integrator to um, to make sure that um, they they are fully um, uh, devoted to the project and and um, on top of things. I hope you will follow this suggestion and have a successful implementation of your ERP project now or in the future. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.